If you're trying to build a winning DFS lineup, DraftKings, FanDuel, whatever it might be, you are in the right place. Let's not waste any of your time and dive right into everything you need to know for week 14. And let's begin with a running back that's going to be one of the highest owned plays on the slate because he is the second highest projected running back right now in terms of fantasy points. And that is $5,900 Zach Moss, who is still $1,000 or more underpriced. Look, Zach Moss came in last week and he was highly owned in the $4,000 price range. And he should have been that highly owned, but he only put up like seven points. However, this was like the first bad game he's had all year this year and last year as a starter and look at this his usage was elite 94 percent of the snaps unbelievable 91 percent of the rush attempts and when you factor out the quarterback rushes he had 100 percent of the backfield carries he had a tough matchup last week against the titans who brought an extra man into the box probably because he had almost 200 yards against them earlier this year this week he has a top 10 matchup against the bengals you can play him. and i mentioned zach moss was the second highest projected running back this week well the highest projected guy is an obvious name it's christian mccaffrey and just so you know he's a thousand dollars more than anybody else you can see that but a ten and a half point favorite and a nice matchup against seattle that he dominated on Thanksgiving, basically 100 yards in the first half. This week, he's projected for six more points than anybody else, a cash game lock. So you want McCaffrey and cash, you can pair him up with Zach Moss, the two best cash running back plays this week. Now let's look at a GPP play from his own team. And that takes us to the tight end position where we see George Kittle here at $5,900 against the Seattle team that plays heavy cover three, heavy zone defenses. And how do you beat this? Well, you throw short, you throw to the middle of the field. And one way to do that is with a great tight end. And that's exactly what George Kittle is. Now check this out. Kittle leads the 49ers in fantasy points per route against cover three and like i said seattle's highest defensive scheme is covered three nearly 40 percent of the time now you'll see some other guys from this team mccaffrey on check downs debo on yards after the catch in the middle of the field find a lot of success but i'm putting my money at lower ownership on kittle here and if i'm liking kittle it means that i do like what i'm seeing for brock purdy but i must call out brock purdy normally sees his big upside weeks against man defenses that's exactly what he saw last week for 300 yards and four touchdowns against the eagles this is a zone defense like we said cover three if there's one spot where Purdy struggles, it is against cover three. We saw him throw the pick six against Seattle on Thanksgiving, not crack 200 yards. So that is a little bit of a sketchy spot here for me. But overall, he has the weapons that are all finally healthy now for a stretch of games. And I think he's fine to at least get the ball to Kittle for you. And he's a nice stacking option. Now, speaking of nice stacking options, another stack that I really like and is probably the best stack on the week as of this recording, and it's going to be Kansas City. And of course, if you're stacking them, it means you're going to Mahomes. And his number one option that I'm stacking him with is Travis Kelsey and look right now people might be frustrated because he hasn't top 15 fantasy points since week seven that's a pretty long time now and if you look at his performance last week against the Packers it leaves a lot to be desired just five targets now he does go for 80 yards or more in his second straight game and you must call out that in the first half of this game the Chiefs had three total possessions and one of those possessions was basically a kneel down so they really only had two possessions in the entire first half not the first quarter the entire first half so it was a weird game where they didn't get to possess the ball all that much overall though Kelsey has remained pretty solid and this week he gets the number one match on the week against the Bills linebackers who allow an 82% catch rate to opposing tight ends. Now, I do think the Chiefs stack overall is the best stack and will give you some leverage, especially if you avoid somebody like Rashi Rice who will be highly owned in there. Still not a bad play if you stack him up, but it also gives you a little bit of leverage off Isaiah Pacheco, who's coming in as one of the higher owned running backs. And it's fair because he's just been a workhorse back. You can see right here on our official data partner, Fantasy Life. All this information is free, by the way. You can use all these tools down below. It's linked below, Fantasy Life. You can see Pacheco has been a three down back. The last two weeks also in there without Jared. Eric McKinnon, you're seeing more passing game usage. You're seeing him see 75% or more of the rush attempts over the last month of the season. And really, you could take it back for over the last six weeks. And every single week, it seems like we're saying there's career high usage in production for Pacheco because that's what's happening. 110 yards last week against the Packers, another career high day. Now, this week, he's in a game with the second highest total on the slate. He's a favorite. It sets up nicely for running backs, but because of that, he's highly owned. So if you're going to play and make sure you're different elsewhere. And one way to get different elsewhere is through the rookie running back in Baltimore, who's coming out of the bye week. And every single week this year that he's played, his usage has only increased and you can see that right here on fantasy life the official data partner look at his snap 17 22 37 46 percent now he enters the bye week it's likely he's gonna see 50 percent or more of the snaps coming out of the bye week because all this guy has done is be productive he had 89 yards on 11 touches so like nine yards per touch before the bye and he's now averaging 9.7 yards per touch this season he has ranked right now this is number one in the nfl ahead of devon a chain if he had enough t- touches to actually qualify here so he'll head into this game as a seven point favorite he has a very beatable matchup against the rams linebackers and running backs in similar spots against the Rams. And look, Keith Mitchell's not an average running back, but if we just look at the average performance, they're taking 14 fantasy points or more a game. So I think Mitchell's a great leverage play on this slate. Now, before we get into the next stack that I think is fantastic, be sure right now to hit the subscribe button on this channel. It helps me out and it also will let you more easily see my future content. Now, the next stack that I'm interested in, they're like the number four stack maybe on the week, top five for sure, is Justin Herbert. Keenan Allen's the clear and obvious number one option there. He's projected for five more points than any other receiver on this slate. Now, one interesting spot for the Chargers, and I'm not 
not a fan of putting running backs in stacks. Austin Eckler is one of the few exceptions. McCaffrey, to an extent, Alvin Kamara. But in general, if you just wanted to play Austin Eckler by himself, I think it's appealing. He hasn't been all that great this year, but if you look at his schedule, it's been brutal. Just look at Austin Eckler's schedule these last couple of months. You have brutal matchups against the Cowboys the Bears the Lions the Jets in here the Ravens in here go a little bit more even the Patriots none of these are good matchups he's had like two good matchups and during that time one recent one against the Packers oh what do you know he's averaging six yards per touch he's also dealt with injuries the offense has been very dysfunctional and lacking efficiency and the offensive line has been very banged up but now he gets a matchup against Denver and even though their secondary has improved and gotten healthier they're still allowing a lot of yards on the ground this season they are bottom three over the last two months against running backs and fantasy so Eckler's an interesting leverage play and so is $6,300 Adam Thielen who look what a difference a month makes he's now not getting any ownership in fantasy and honestly I really can't blame you it's just a 16 point team total here he's still seeing targets though 26% over the last month but here's the issue that we were warning you about when we said trade him in your season long league a couple of months ago and it's the fact that earlier this year he was thriving on seeing 12 and 15 target games because look this is an older wide receiver who's not winning downfield and not getting anything after the catch now that he's only seeing this type of usage the last month of three six nine targets 7.25 Five targets per game it's tough for him to have any type of big week so he is going to be really low owned if we can get one of those dozen target weeks out of him but the Panthers are throwing less that's where it can pay off in general I'm probably staying away from this spot I'd rather go to like a Keaton Mitchell leverage spot more upside or you could even just stay at the position in a similar price range for leverage and go to Chris Olave who is going to pick up a little bit more ownership than Adam Thielen but right now his ownership maybe is staying in check because we don't know what the quarterback situation is no matter what it is I kind of want to go to Olave here because Olave has eight or more targets in every game since week six and a 20 percent target share higher in all but one game this year and look if it's Jameis Winston under center this week even better news for him slinging it downfield to Olave now we also got some good news in Cincinnati oh after Monday Night Football and Jake Browning and the offense looked fantastic because Joe Mixon now at $6,100 this makes him go from being overpriced if it was Jake Browning from two weeks ago to now a very fair price Chase Brown the rookie returned for Cincinnati the backup running back here and you actually saw Mixon's usage decrease for the first time in about a month as you can see right here on Fantasy Life his overall rush attempts he was seeing like 90 percent 89 percent of back-to-back games it dropped to 63 percent of the backfield carries so chase brown was more involved but that's fine because overall his usage increased mixon saw a season high 26 opportunities and 25 touches and look at the receiving work right here jake brown was checking it down to mixon and not afraid to do so season high usage in that department in terms of routes run targets with seven and receptions with six and now mixon's gonna get a favorable matchup against the Colts, to allow the fourth most points to opposing running backs now let's talk about another stack and it's josh allen who's coming in lower on this week and for obvious reasons the offense has been inconsistent but they are running a lot more plays and playing better as of late for fantasy at least and Dalton Kincaid is a reason why look he only had six targets last week and that seems like a letdown for a rookie tight end it's crazy how good he's been now the concern for you is that Dalton Knox officially practiced in full on Wednesday and he seems to be set to return and with Dalton Knox this year Kincaid was splitting the overall routes he was not on the field all that much as often as he is right now so this is where a lot of people are starting to be okay is it time to sit Kincaid will he have this production I personally think since they fired Ken Dorsey and now their offense is using a lot more three wide receivers with just Dalton Kincaid on the field and he's played well and the offense has played a lot better I don't think they're going to kind of go away from that and go back to what wasn't working earlier this year so because of that you will get lower ownership on Dalton Kincaid maybe pair him up with either a Gabe Davis or more likely a Stefan Diggs in a double stack let's go to another leverage wide receiver who only had one catch last week his worst day since week one when he had zero catches and that is $4,600 Drake London a very cheap wide receiver one here at just $4,600 and you can forget about last week it was a bad matchup against the Jets we knew that this team did not want to throw the ball at all anyways they only threw 27 times but it's a totally different matchup now against the Bucks, who allowed the second most points to opposing wide receivers and this is just a toss-up game a one point spread these teams are battling for their division for a playoff spot here and look even this Bucks secondary last week gave up 10 targets and nearly 70 receiving yards to Jonathan Mingo who struggled for most of the year and is nowhere near as efficient or good as Drake London so London is a nice leverage spot and now this next running back is going to be picking up ownership but it's for a good reason and that's the running back on the opposite side of this game from Drake London and it's Rashad White who's $6,800 he's close to being a $7,000 back he's exactly what you wanted him to be earlier this year in your season long leagues when you drafted him he's a high usage pass catching running back over the last five weeks he's averaging 21 opportunities per game now this isn't a good matchup on the ground against Atlanta but that's fine because he's a great pass catcher he had six receptions and was a top 12 back earlier this year in the same matchup now there are a few more players from that game that are really interesting it's probably an interesting not game stack but skinny stack at a guy from each side without the quarterbacks but before we get there I gotta let you know about the partner of the program and it's price picks a lot of you know about price picks but a good amount of you still do not we've been partnering with them for three 
years, and they are as good as it gets, I would say, when it comes to getting more action in on fantasy and DFS. Look, it's very simple. You just go right here to any game, to any sport, to really any stat you want. If it's DK Metcalf, more or less 64 and a half receiving yards. If you like the more there, you take the more. It's as simple as that. And now our partners over at Price Picks are doing a lovely thing for all of you. And this is what the contract that we got for the last three years with them is. You get a free bet up to $100. You put in 20 bucks, you get 20 right back. You put in 100, you get 100 right back to play with. And if you win, you can just take it right back out and close the account. Do whatever you got to do or keep playing. It's up to you. Now, early on, here's an example of one prop combination that I do like. I like Rashad White over 22 and a half receiving yards for what we just talked about in terms of the tough matchup on the ground. And Miles Sanders under 26 and a half rushing yards. This team is running more tough matchup against New Orleans. And it's Chuba Hubbard, who's been the clear workhorse back as of late because Miles Sanders can't pass protect and that's getting him off the field. So you can go ahead and tail me on that exact entry if you would like with that free bet up to $100. It's linked down below or just scan the QR code on the screen. Now, I said I had some more players from this game and one of them, if you're looking to punt the tight end position, $3,100 K dot. And you might be saying, hold on, Sal, he had zero points last week. Indeed, for the first time this year, he had absolutely zero targets, which is likely an outlier performance since that hasn't been the case as of late. And even more interesting, this was actually season high usage for K Dotton. 94% of the routes run was the most that he was out there on the field this year, and it led to zero targets. So when he's seen similar usage of like 80 to 85% of the routes, he's seeing at least five targets a game. So I'm expecting him to bounce back against an Atlanta team that allows the third most tight end production this year. Now let's talk about a wide receiver who, oh my God, this guy's coming in really low on because it's Cooper Cup, because he's definitely dealing with an injury and he has not been as good and Puka Nakua has been showing him up especially last week but here's the deal even though he's been struggling he still led the team with a 24 percent target share eight targets last week and now he faces a tough Baltimore secondary that loves to dis disguise their coverages they run basically every single coverage they disguise it they make it hard on the quarterback and they make it hard on pass catchers to understand what's coming so the angle here is that Cooper Cup's really experienced he's seen all of this he's beat all of this before meanwhile Puka Nakua might find some more troubles identifying coverages and getting open this week this makes me actually like Cooper Cup as a leverage play, assuming you're just kind of in that price range and you can't afford the guys above him. Now, back to the running back position we go, and Josh Jacobs is here at $6,900. He'll be coming out of a bye week, and look, he's now played four games with Antonio Pierce as his head coach. And according to Fantasy Life, our official data partner in those four games, look at this right here. 26 carries, 25, 14, and 20. He is running the ball, this new head coach, and in one game where Jacobs only had 14 carries in a game where they trailed for a lot of the time in the fourth quarter, he basically said, we need to get Josh the ball 20 plus times, and he was like visibly angry, Antonio Antonio Pierce at the podium and then after that he comes out and he gets him 20 carries now look Josh Jacobs hasn't been explosive this year but if you're gonna get 20 carries in what should be a somewhat close game this week yeah I'll keep going there. and it's hard not to just keep going back to Mike Evans even though his price is increasing it's still not high enough 7700 he's been a top five fantasy receiver this year a clear-cut alpha top 10 in efficiency and usage and if you don't believe me just look at the stats over here on fantasy life over this last month of the season 37 26 33 and 44 percent target share that's a 35 percent target share the last month he ran in the top three in wide receiver usage during that time and the last time he faced atlanta he had a nice 82 yard day with a touchdown so i mentioned earlier that there's so many players i want to take from that game for skinny stacks there's mike evans another one and so is Bijan robinson at 6500 this guy is just way too cheap this should be a 7500 running back for what we're seeing the last month of the season he's played 69 percent of the snaps and averaged 21 opportunities a game over the last month and he's been top five in running back efficiency everything is clicking for him earlier this year when he took on tampa he only had that one carry for three yards because he was dealing with an illness but tyler Algier in that game had over 110 total yards now one guy we got to talk about is elijah moore because he's a cheaper wide receiver in the mid four thousand dollar price range this week and he's picking up a lot of ownership i think he's over owned and now the reason why he is very attractive and we mentioned this last week when he was lower owned is because joe flacco is his quarterback who he averaged 12 points a game with 62 percent more than any other quarterback during his time with the jets and that picked up last week because last week elijah moore had a team high 12 targets now amari cooper left this game with a concussion but that just means amari cooper might not be playing this upcoming week which means maybe even more targets and upside for a cheap elijah moore in which should be a decent matchup we'll have to throw a little bit against Jacksonville again I think he's too highly owned here but depending on the type of matchup maybe a cash game you're playing in he's definitely an option and now if you're looking to punt the wide receiver position you can look at Parker Washington because this pricing came out before the game was played on Monday night before Christian Kirk only ran one route and ended up getting hurt and Parker Washington had a great game filling in for the Christian Kirk role he's just three thousand dollars Washington went out there and had success with Trevor Lawrence he had success with CJ Beathard depending on who starts this week caught all six of his targets 61 yards he sorted this bigger version of Christian Kirk not as good I would say at least at this point but he played those routes over the middle of the field which will work if CJ Beathard has to take over he'll probably be a popular punt play this week but I really can't get away from it at three thousand dollars unless he starts to become like 10 to 15 plus percent owned now one guy picking up ownership like his teammate Elijah Moore is Jerome Ford I'm pretty surprised by this at 5,500 I get it that he's like the de facto RB1 here but really it hasn't been the case over the last month because both Kareem Hunt and Ford are playing 40 percent of the snaps now Ford's seeing a little bit more passing game usage but Hunt's getting the red zone and touchdown upside so it's like a split 
backfield for a guy picking up double digit ownership i'm not there i'm also a little bit confused on what to do with jonathan mingo because over the last month of the season he's kind of breaking out just had a 38 percent target share he has a 26 percent target share the last month but this carolina team hasn't been good they're not throwing as much because bryce young doesn't have time to throw and it hasn't been good when he's throwing a lot but it's at least worth pointing out that he is getting a lot of volume out there he hasn't been doing much with it but all coming off of a 10 target game jonathan mingo is a nice punt option if the ownership stays low so this is everything you need to know in terms of stacking plays to avoid players to be targeting punt options high-end options whatever it might be for dfs in week 14 i appreciate you all tuning in and if you made it to the end make sure to remember about prize picks our partner that you'll get a free bet up to 100 when you deposit you put in 20 you get 20 right back all the way up to 100 you can tell our miles sanders under rushing yards and rashad white over receiving yards for this week for the beautiful community to play we all hold our hands together as that hits together and we jump up and down and party like you just don't care i appreciate you tuning in and i'll see you all in the next one